Hi there. My name is Crystal Botha. I'm the Director of Family Ministries here at First Presbyterian Church of Tequesta. Today I'd like to share a message to all of you parents out there who are um, raising this generation of children who are all having to grow up in 2020. Every Sunday, for as long as I can remember, I spend the morning hours preparing my message and delivery to the children of the church. Sometimes that takes the form of leading a children's choir, delivering a children's sermon, or leading a Sunday school class or youth group function. And every Sunday, for as long as I can remember, I've had the complete luxury of having a multitude of experiences that have helped shape my being and my beliefs. I have made my share of mistakes, but I have learned from them. Today I find myself in a little bit uncharted territory. I find myself searching for ways to express God's unique and amazing love that he has for each one of us, and I have no past experience of living through a pandemic. This past May, my youngest daughter turned 14. What was I doing at age 14? I was doing absolutely everything to get closer to my friends, whether that be talking on the phone, hanging out at each, at each other's houses, roaming around the mall, or spending the day at the pool or at a favorite park. That was the center of my universe. I spent that year alone at home for the first time as my only older sister. She was so smart, she went to college at the age of 17. I wanted to do everything like her to be like her. She had so much of what I felt I didn't have. She could drive, date, live away from my parents, eat and wear whatever she wanted, and I had to live under the confines of my parents' strict household. In my alone time, I spent time practicing the piano. I worked at a Methodist church as the church pianist for Wednesday evening choir practices and Sunday morning services. I accompanied my mother and others who sang at our church or for music lessons in our home. I enjoyed having my own job at 14 because I had my own money to spend on whatever I wanted. I wanted freedom more than anything. But one thing I certainly was not doing was dealing with the overwhelming magnitude of a pandemic. You too may be feeling like you are wading through uncharted waters with only your head above the surface. When will we finally get through this mess? Back to my 14-year-old daughter. Like I said, at her age, all I was seeking was freedom. That overwhelming desire to shape and exercise your own will that all teenagers go through. And now I look at my 14-year-old daughter and what her life looks like. She struggles to get out of bed because there is no place to go. Schools have been shut down. Theme parks and recreational parks have a limited capacity. There is no thought of coming six feet within another person, much less holding hands for the first time or experiencing a first dance. It doesn't matter what you wear anymore, only the mask matters. This past weekend, she came down with a fever virus and we were encouraged not to go anywhere and not to go to the doctor because she had a fever. Why? Because it might be COVID and our desire to survive or dodge the sickness, the coronavirus, has superseded everything else. What will this break in her life do to her? As her mother, how do I navigate these uncharted waters I have never waded through before? I have two grown children and I have no experience of raising them through a pandemic. I struggled in a normal world to do my best as a parent. My own parents never experienced anything like this. In fact, they are struggling immensely with the effects of isolation, fear, and displacement. How is my daughter going to grow up? One thing I know for certain, if we fail as parents to address the spiritual needs of our children, they will not survive this pandemic. We have been a people of busyness, of schedules, of deadlines, of accolades, and of status. All of a sudden, none of that matters anymore. Sporting events have been put on halt. 
extracurricular camp activities have been canceled. There are no more trophies to earn or display. Sleepovers are no longer permitted. Hanging out is discouraged at all costs. So here I said a little bit of a loss today. I'm a little bit overwhelmed and slightly frustrated. I cannot look to my past self for wisdom or experience. I cannot look to my living relatives for guidance. But there is one who surpasses me and all my living relatives with wisdom, guidance, compassion, and more experience than I can ever imagine. So today I've been spending some time with God. I find reassurance in scripture and I check up on my connection with God every time I pray. The Bible is full of stories of people who overcame great adversity. Most often that is a direct result of trusting in God and emulating the servant lifestyle of Jesus. How is your relationship with the Lord? Are you spending time to cultivate your spiritual existence? What are you doing for others? Do your children and other loved ones see you doing this? How can your children and family members increase your spiritual capacity together? Check out my children's sermon this week. Uh, it's gonna be called Reading Your Spiritual Thermometer for ideas, encouragement, and support. May God bless each of you as we navigate through these waters together. Be strong in the faith, just as Peter was when he stepped out to reach Jesus's hand after the stormy waters had calmed down, to walk on the water. Remember, he was not able to do this on his own. The good news is that neither do we. Reach out your hand to Jesus, trust in the Lord, and rely on the never-ending support of the Holy Spirit. Amen.